Year one is in the books for Utah Athletics Director Mark Harlan. It was quite a year, a year of highs and lows, a year of tragedy and triumph. What stands out to you most about this first year at the University of Utah? Well, I think it, it comes down to the people, uh, the incredible people that I've had a chance to meet. It starts with our student athletes and our staff and our coaches. Um, just an incredible group of people all pulling for the same goal and working together. And of course, also our fans and our donors. You know, there's a lot said about University of Utah coming in here about the incredible support. Um, but it's been absolutely overwhelming and, and particularly memorable as I look back on the year. One of the things that stood out about this year in my mind was the, the, the long-awaited Pac-12 South title for the football program. You have to be happy with where the football program was. You gave Kyle Whittingham an extension. Why did you decide to give him that extension and, and what motivated you to do that? Well, I, I think for me it was really just starting to sit down and, and work with him. And, you know, they always talk about the system that he has at the University of Utah, yeah. but I needed to get in that system and, and learn about all the things that he was doing. And all that I learned was, was that, you know, he's such a special, unique coach and perfect for the University of Utah and the way he molds young men. And so for me, it was a no-brainer. You know, obviously the on-field success, but more importantly is the, you know, incredible graduation rates of that program. The GPAs are up. Every single metric that you look at is up. So why wait? And this year, the expectations are even higher. And right. it's not often that the Utah football program in the Pac-12 has a target on their back as a team to beat, but that's the case. Are you excited to see how they respond to that? Well, you bet I'm excited. And I know Witt would say it's day by day. We ignore yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's win the day. And that's the way it should be. But it's awesome to be in this position. And it's awesome to, to have our young people you know, get excited about this. And our fans are excited. 98% renewal rate for football. Um, so... It's a, it's a new place for us, but it's a place I think we're going to get accustomed to. A lot of football fans curious about football scheduling. I think a lot of fans would like to see a bigger name in the non-conference. What's your philosophy on that? Well, the first thing I'll say is, is the football schedule is set for years to come. It's, yeah. it's part of what it, what it goes. But we're looking at uh, blending in more power fives and future scheduling patterns down the way. Certainly, we have the rivalry with BYU. Tom Holmo and I have talked that if it makes sense to take a year or two off, we could or we can maybe fit it in at the same year. It's things that we're looking at now. Certainly the, the Michigan model of a few years back worked really, really well. But what we do know is, is we want to schedule to, to get to the Final Four. That's our destination that we're always going to shoot for, and we're going to be very strategic as we do so. Excellent. Um, the state of the basketball program. I know the last three years they haven't made the NCAA tournament, and you know the standard here. Sure. It's pretty high. Absolutely. What's your uh, evaluation of the program, where it stands right now, where it needs to go in the future? Well, I think that, that we all want to be in the postseason, uh, not just for basketball, for all our teams. That's the expectations at the University of Utah. I think what I saw this year was, was Larry molding a, a, a young team that needed to come together, um, picked well low in the, in the league, finished in the top three of the league, got the bye, didn't play the way we wanted to in Vegas. I was hoping we could make a run there. Didn't happen. But we got better as the year went, you know, went on, and I think that's what's really important. We want to be in the tournament. Larry wants to be in the tournament. We're going to continue to do all those things to make that happen administratively, working with him. We've, we've had some key additions to the, to the staff, obviously. Um, we're excited about what he's done there, but we're going to continue to work together to, to get the youth where we want them to be. And next year got more challenging because Donnie Tillman's taking a leave of absence. I'm sure you, were, you, you um, perhaps maybe were surprised about this news. He just decided he was coming back. Well, Donnie's a great young man. You know, we're blessed to have 550 student athletes uh, competing at the U in, in 20 sports, and so always things are going to come up. And, you know, Donnie came forward, and, and uh, you know, obviously we know he's been managing the health of his mother for quite some time. And he just felt like it was time to be closer. And so we respect his decision. We'll miss him. He was a really fun guy to be around. Obviously, um, you know, you don't run from the fact that you'll miss him. I think there's some depth now going forward on the team and some of the new guys we got coming in. So we'll move forward. He'll move forward. But we really wish him all the best. Moving on to the Pac-12, and there's been a lot of stories and a lot of focus on the current state of the Pac-12, where it stands with the other Power Fives. And of course, it's always keeping up with the Joneses, as you know. That's, right. <laughs> That's a great responsibility that you have to do that. Where do you see the Pac-12 right now? Where does it need to go to get better? Well, it's been a year of, of being in the news for the wrong reasons. I, yeah. I don't think uh, you know I should run from that, nor does Commissioner Scott or, frankly, any of the other athletic directors. But when something like this happens or events like these happen, all you can do is come together, confront it, and deal with it. And I think what we've seen since the October officiating embarrassment, you yeah. know, for example, 
we've been able to meet since then and, and really work on change. What's been really good out of all of this is Larry has really created a more inclusive environment that involves all the athletic directors and the presidents and chancellors, I believe, working at a level that we never have before. So we're going to confront the, the things that are ahead of us. Key to that is we've got to get better in football as a conference. Yeah. You know, everybody has to own that. We have to get better in men's basketball. Uh, everybody owns that. We made some changes in our scheduling philosophies in basketball, I think, to help with that, adding two more league games that I think will help. So we all have to own it ourselves rather than blaming. I think that's very important. And then big deci decisions ahead about television and those kind of things. These are 12 of the best universities in the country. We just have to collectively continue to come together more and uh, get after it. And you, it sounds like you, you mentioned uh, you know, not running from these things. I mean, have, has the athletic directors, presidents felt the need to really hit these issues hard? Absolutely. I mean, we've had some meetings that have, uh, you know, been pretty candid mm. uh, uh, about different things that we all can do better. Um, no one's holding back. And I think that's helpful. Out of conflict, out of that, those kind of conversations, I think comes really good results. So again, we're going to work together. Commissioner Scott is, has really looked at things he's done in the past and things that he needs to, do, needs to do now. We're working together collectively. And you know, listen, sometimes competitive nature things are cyclical. I yeah. think that's we've kind of on a, been a, on a bad cycle of it. I think it's our turn now to get back at it. Well, it's certainly been a great time for Utah football, and things are looking up, and now you look at the stadium expansion. You have to be so excited about this. I know when you came in, you knew this was something that was important, but you didn't have a chance to really dig into it, and now you have. How excited are you to see this thing roll forward? Well, very excited. You know, Dr. Hill, my predecessor, did such a phenomenal job on this feasibility study. Kyle Brennan, the deputy athletic director as well, they handed it to me when I got here, and I just went through it. I had a lot of questions for Chris and then others as we went through the process. and. And it was so clear it was time to go, right? We just had to make sure that the financial model was solid and that there were donors to support it. And the Gar family came forward with a monumental transformational gift for us along with others. So where we are right now is we're right on schedule. We have our contractor on board. We have our design team on board. We just visited a bunch of institutions. We're gonna visit more shortly. And we're gonna come out with something I think everyone's gonna be really, really excited about it. And it'll be ready to go for the 21 season. How? much does that benefit your program and also how much can it benefit the community when this is done? Well, I think the program will, will, be, will be profound in that we're going to completely gut and fix the whole operational center. You know, the Clark building had, had run out of time. Uh, that's the best <laughs> way I can say it. And so we're going to have a, a nice locker room training facility, press room. Uh, Thank you. The, 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 visit, the visiting locker room will, will be fine. It won't be anything that needs more to be. You know, it'll be fine. So that's going to be great for us for recruiting and, and for game day operations. And then to create all of this club space and premium seating. And then to also have chair backs. We're going to add an additional thousand that we already had in the south end zone, taking us to about 51444 if you're counting. Um, <laughs> it's going to be great. And then that space can be rented during the week through our friends that run the stadium and auxiliary services and others. So everybody benefits, but it certainly will lift our football program. And when you lift the football program, you lift the whole department. And that's being awesome. No one's going to miss the current South End Zone facility. <laughs> We're just going to get through the next few years. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll duct tape. We'll get there. Well, well it's right. so exciting. So many exciting things. Year one in the books. It's great to look back on it, Mark. Thanks so much for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. And good yep. luck next season. Thanks.